It's a minute after the hour, 68 degrees, going to be a beautiful day in the state of Alabama. We're joined by State Representative District 33, Ben Robbins. And Ben, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Jimmy Dell. Good to have you with us this morning. And talking about busy, you guys were busy during the legislative session. How did that go, man? <laughs> it was a, <clears throat> we were very busy this session uh, from everything from uh, workforce development bills to gaming bills to IVF bills to I mean we had a lot thrown at us that some things we okay. weren't prepared let's, for. Let's 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 get started here. Walk us through some of the bills that you were involved in as a matter of fact uh, for District 33. Well one bill that I sponsored that I think I mentioned here before that I was very proud of uh, it's, it's called age verification and so what that would require is that if you you go on to an uh, adult website you have to, that website must verify that you are an adult. So minors will not be able to access material that they should not see. It's just modernizing what we do in the modern, in the actual world to the virtual world. And in that I also made it a further crime if you were to share a photo that you get. So if you, what happens often with, with these teenagers, they share photos that they really shouldn't be sharing, and then mm -hmm. the boy gets it and he then sends it out to his friends. Well, if you share without that consent, you've now committed a crime. So, uh, I how, feel- How well was that received? I think it was, very, it was very well received. It took two sessions to get it yeah. passed, but I had to work through some of the kinks on, because of people's privacy, some people were sure. concerned that, well, if you have to put an ID in to access a website, that's kind of a concern because then your identification could be online. But we learned there are these, well, we'll say third-party apps that allow you to verify you're an adult, use that online identification to then go onto websites. People use that for sports betting on their phone mm -hmm. now, so there's ways to verify you're of age, but we weren't requiring these adult websites to verify people that they were the right age, so we just took what other websites are doing and said apply that to what you do. Talk about some of the other bills. Well, you know, some of the other bills I was involved with, I had one bill that I really, I couldn't get much, it didn't pass, but it was to recruit people to rural communities. Do, sometimes, do, Ben, are you planting seeds for something down the road? Or? I, you are. Sometimes you, you're, uh, and sometimes you file things to use leverage to yeah, say, yeah. I'm, I'm working on this, but if you work, help me with this, mm -hmm. then we can let that mm -hmm. kind of go by the wayside. Because some people, you know, might not like this, but you know that if it moves, they don't want the attention of it. It moves as in it gets passed, it moves along. And I had another bill that was on the, the Senate floor the last day, but just couldn't get voted on that would have, uh, would have, streamline the process and transferring car tags once someone passes away that but that wasn't too exciting for district 33 <laughs> but it was just to kind of help with paperwork so uh it seemed like a long session to me for some reason i don't know it, it was a long session mm. i think because we we had so we you know we we started <laughs> the session and everything was about gaming and that was the big conversation was what are we going to do about gaming it consumed all the oxygen and even you know a lot of times what we do doesn't get covered much in the media mm -hmm. but it was mm -hmm. everyone knew what we were doing everyone was talking about it and then all of a sudden that supreme court case happened about ivf and whether an embryo was a life and all of a sudden that got dumped on you know all of a sudden we had to we had to pass the legislation to get IVF started again. To Talk a, about that a little bit. Well, you know, so basically what happened was a, you know, the, the quick backstory, uh, a couple in Mobile was going through IVF treatment. They were trying to have a child. Mm -hmm. uh, an individual uh, roamed through the hallways of the hospital, grabbed, went into the IVF clinic, dropped the embryo, it died, family sued the hospital, worked its way all the way to the state Supreme Court. State Supreme Court ruled that that embryo was a life and that had the right to sue for wrongful death. So then all of a sudden, every not every IVF clinic, but some IVF clinics closed and said, we can't operate because we could be sued 
we could be held criminally liable mm -hmm. for wrongful death. And so there were some conversations had, and what ended up happening is we basically just gave some immunity to these doctors to say, well, you can't be sued for A, B, and C. So you couldn't be sued for wrongful death. So they felt, they as the clinics felt as if they could open then and been, be providing those services again. So that's where we are, but I, I think that was going to be more of a quick fix because you could, you had a lot of women going through treatment right sure. then, and we had to get it open so they could they mm -hmm. could have children. But I think we we will probably have a more long term solution to that problem. Getting back to <coughs> a topic that was much much talked about is is gaming. Where did we end up with this? Well, we ended up with several different bills but you know what happened was the bill a bill passed the house of representatives it went to the senate the senate then amended the bill and changed it and sent it so then once that happened it's a different bill so then we as the house have to vote on the senate bill we rejected the senate bill and then went to a thing called conference so that's when you have two different bills that have been passed mm -hmm. You're supposed to mediate and come up with a, with a, it could be an agreement, a brand new bill. Well, a new bill kind of emerged out of the two, and then the House of Representatives agreed to that bill, and then it went to the Senate, and the Senate did not agree to that bill. Well, they actually, they didn't, they didn't get to the bill. You had to vote on a constitutional amendment to allow us to just get to the bill, and they, they voted down the constitutional amendment. So then at that point, the bill wasn't necessarily dead. It could have been brought back up, but there was never a momentum to get it brought back How up. How frustrating is, is stuff like this? Well, I mean, I, it's all part of the process. Yeah. You know, um, Rome wasn't built in a day. And you've so, learned that, right? Right. So, you know, you can't beat your head too much if you're, you get mm -hmm. frustrated that someone doesn't see your point of view or you can't understand their point of view. Right. You just have to try to you just have to know what your goals are and what you want to do and then just try to move people along in that direction or, or join in when you see that someone's moving in a direction on a bill or, or a, 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 a project or an effort that you think you can be supportive of. Ben Robbins is District 33 State Representative, our guest this morning. Uh, let's uh, get back to District 33. Talk a little bit more about some pluses from the session for our area. Well, some of the pluses is that I think it's been announced, but Charter, uh, you know, Spectrum has a has received a very large grant that will <clears throat> put in a large amount of broadband in South Talladega and North Coosa County. So that area, basically south of Sylacauga, that has spotty broadband all the way to about Stewartville is going to spotty to none. <laughs> spotty to none. <laughs> is about to get, uh, I mean, it's not going to happen overnight, but the, the funds have been given from the, federal from the federal government to the state and now given to uh, Charter, and they are going to start putting in broadband across that whole area. And Coosa Valley has finished their broadband network, and now they're going to start expanding outside of their current network. So in terms of broadband that we've talked about a lot, we've made a, a great deal of progress. And I know to some of the people that still message me that you don't have it, <laughs> I understand we're still working on it, but we can't get every home every, you know, overnight. Um, but I would love to see by the end of this decade, every home in Talladega County and Coosa County have broadband. And I think that's a possibility at the rate we're going. Wow, that is good news. Uh, the former Avondale Mills properties, uh, talk about that. that it's exciting. Um, I'm sure you saw that we just uh, demoed the lean-to yeah. and done some more work. And I don't know if you saw, but it's the uh, we have put out for bid for general contractors. So, um, and we got 18, 18 general contractors are interested in the project. Everybody wants it. Everybody <laughs> wants it. I think even some of the big people want it. You know, mm -hmm. some of the, not just, uh, I mean, when I say some of the big people, I'm talking, you know, your Brassfield and Gorys and your Robbins and Mortons. Right. So those, those, you know, multi-billion dollar general contracting companies are interested in it. And what we're, so what we're hoping is we get the general contractor in place and then we get the general contractor in place. We're looking at uh, construction will begin 
late you know, 24 and the beginning of 25. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we are definitely moving along. It, it's, it's exciting. I'm sure, I mean, I think now when you drive by, you've gotten used to seeing it leveled <laughs> and cleared. And, it, you know, if you just could see a picture from two years ago, it's, yeah. it's, it, it doesn't seem like a lot's happened, but a lot really has happened. So uh, we talk about the, the next phase, uh, the construction phase. What's going to be happening? And for people who may not know, uh, get us up to date on this. <clears throat> well, briefly, it's the East Alabama Rural Innovation Training Hub. It's Earth. So I, it's an innovation center. So that's where you can grow, go and learn how to grow a, a business if you want to be a, an entrepreneur. But it's also a training hub. So kind of what I call a trade school on steroids. It's much bigger, much more <laughs> involved than just a traditional trade school where it would be, I just want to go to learn to weld. You, what we will have is partnerships with all of our local businesses, uh, regional businesses, and they would have hubs within our larger hub that would create where we would, they would actually provide the curriculum and the skills and we would, the students, which would not just be students, but it would be adults that would learn the skill sets needed to go work in those industries and we would have a pipeline that would create direct employment from Earth to whatever industry that might be. And what makes Earth unique and what excites so many people and why we've been able to get funding is not only is it rural, and you don't find anything in a rural community that has innovation and training in the same location, but also in the last now uh, four general fund budgets, we've been able to get money appropriated for a transit system. And so what that means is that we will pick people up and we will take them to Earth to get trained. So if you are an adult that does not have transportation and says, I can't get to work, I can't get to CAC, I can't get here to get training, well, we'll just come pick you up. We'll have the means to do that through Earth. And in the second phase, what we'll be doing at Earth that's so exciting is that because we have partnerships with DHR, SAFE, you know, Silicon Alliance Family Enhancement, and uh, early childhood that we will build a early childhood center, a daycare on site. It will be a standalone building. It'll be in between Eva Jane and the credit union building. Mm -hmm. We'll be building a building right there where you can pull in the road, drop your child off, park, and then go get training. So what that means is the two largest barriers that the governor, the governor's report said were lack of childcare, lack of transportation, we will be addressing and providing both of those services to get you training and then get you out into the workforce. Mm. Uh, and so I think it's exciting. I think that, and everything about it is not, it's not just services, but it's training because just to drive a school bus for Talladega County or Sylacauga City, you have to have hours shadowing someone. Well, that transit system is gonna give you the opportunity to shadow and then you can drive the bus to get, and then you can go and drive a school bus, or then you can get more hours and become a CDL driver or a heavy equipment operator. Or if you want to work in the daycare space, you can learn at that early childhood center and get certifications and get your training there and then go out and work. So everything is, it's, it's holistic. It's everything is an opportunity to help someone, but it's an opportunity for you to get training at the exact same time. We've got a lot of viewers in Coosa County. Right. And uh, I know you're excited about some the future of Coosa County as well. I am. I, I hope that everyone's aware of the, the Two Rivers uh, sawmill that's coming to Kellyton. So, and not only is that project going to happen, it's, I was last told it's going to bring 150 jobs, which will also do a lot, not just for uh, Coosa County and their direct employment, but every landowner that has any trees across Coosa, Talladega, and Clay, Tallapoosa counties, the value of their trees are gonna yeah. go up because all of a sudden you're gonna have a bigger demand. So it's gonna be a, a so if you're a log, anything from a logger to uh, need a job at that sawmill, it's gonna be a, a direct boon to the economy and it's gonna be great for Coosa County because not only will two rivers come, but then there are some side industries that are already in conversations about possibly locating to Coosa County because of the sawmill. And so it's going to be an exciting time for Coosa County because 
One thing that's great about it is if you live in Weagafka or some area of Coosa County and you like the country feel of where you mm -hmm. live, this isn't going to change anything about how your, your surroundings. It's not going to change the country feel of Coosa County because it's way over in the industrial park of Coosa County, in Kellyton. But you're going to get the tax revenue that then means you're going to have your roads fixed and some other issues that might not be able to be taken care of. You're now going to have the revenue to do it. So I think it's exactly what Coosa County would like to see happen. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, all of us uh, are concerned about our roadways, whether it's in Coosa or, or Talladega counties. And uh, we're spending a few more minutes with State Representative District 33, Ben Robbins. Now, uh, with the session over, what's happening with Ben Robbins? What do you do uh, outside of your time at the State House in Montgomery? Well, I still work as a lawyer, so I still do that. And like last night, I, I uh, spoke to the Republican women of South Talladega County and talked to them about the session and answered some questions they had. And, and uh, they're a lot harder on you than I am, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're a pretty great group. Uh, and you're a pretty good interviewer, mm. Jimmy Dale. Uh, they, they're a really good group. But you know, you go to things like that, you just talk to constituents and. Um, and sometimes you hear things and you say, huh, why isn't that a law? And then you start working on something like a person brought to me yesterday that when people get out of the military, it takes them a little bit of time to get back on their feet, whether it's find a job or what have you. And so could there be a way to freeze a credit score for six months hmm. to a year? Because sometimes, you know, you go from this being your set life to then, all right, now I gotta find my footing again. And maybe in that time you miss some payments because you're not working or, and they gave service to our country. So why would we penalize someone mm -hmm. in their credit for coming off military service and say, well, you took a ding on your credit because you missed that payment. So I think there's some merit to that. And that's something I'm definitely gonna look into and see if that is something on the state level we could do or if that would have to be better. Before we go this morning and, and I'll be the first to say that it is frustrating for sure. We had COVID in 2020 and, and we've not, not fully recovered from that, of course, but you see and I see businesses struggling to keep employees. It's, it's, a, it's a huge problem. <clears throat> we have a labor participation crisis, which means we don't have enough people participating in the workforce. And we passed several bills this session directly to address that. Um, I can't say if they're, they're not gonna work overnight, but some of the things we did was we allowed younger people to start working. So there were some parameters on if you were a teenager having to get permission from your principal to have a job. We've, we've streamlined some of that so younger people can enter the workforce. We also have created a separate high school certificate track where if you just want to learn a skill and you don't want to get bogged down in some of the some of the classes you might mm -hmm. not need to take will allow you to do that and graduate with a high school diploma so mm -hmm. we're trying to get people into the workforce and we also <coughs> with child care again one of the big issues is I don't have housing and child care so we passed a housing tax credit bill which would hopefully spur more development of housing to provide people with opportunities. Because if you're, you know, for an example, in Coosa County, I mean, Clay County, that uh, Welburn Cabinets, mm -hmm. they expanded, but instead of expanding at their existing facility where they, where they might, where they probably would have, they had to go build a brand new plant in East Taboga because there were workers, they, they could get people in Oxford. There just weren't enough people in Clay County and there wasn't <clears> enough housing for them to say, all right, if we add 500 jobs, there's not 500 houses. It's amazing. So we passed a housing tax credit bill, which will hopefully produce more housing in the state and a child care tax credit bill, which will now give those working moms and working parents a tax credit for the money they spend on daycare. So that will hopefully get them yeah. to say, well, all right, well, I'm going to get this money back paying it. So we're going to be able to actually go to work and not have to stay here. Because some, some moms want to stay home, and there's nothing wrong with that. But some do want to go to mm -hmm. work. But when they look at, well, daycare will cost this much. I'll make this much. Why would I even go? Right. 
But now, when they get a tax credit, it will hopefully encourage them to get mm -hmm. back into the workforce. Uh, I want to squeeze this in before we go. We don't have much time left, but appreciate uh, Ben Robbins being with us this morning. Uh, where are we with our prison system? Well, that, that's a big, I need to squeeze that in. So where we are is we still have an overcrowding problem. We are trying to readdress our pardons and paroles on how it operates. And we are still in the construction of prison, of new prisons. Are, are we building new prisons as of now? Or? We are. Okay. And so we will overhaul our prison system, move more, and, and close some of our existing yeah. prisons. Yeah. Okay. Ben, always a pleasure. Thanks for coming this morning. And it's always uh, enlightening to hear from you. And I uh, hope you have a fantastic summer. We'll talk again. Well, thank you so much, Jim Dale. You too. District 33 State Representative Ben Robbins, our guest this morning. More Daybreak after this.